I, I'm getting there because it's taken 20 years and I've been in it since 2001 and, and I'm an educator by training. I'm getting there because of technology and the ability to, to do YouTube and webinars and all this great stuff. This is, I'm a, I'm a tech nerd, I'm a marketing guy, I'm, I'm a big fan. But the open-mindedness of the industry, it's like prying open a freaking can with your fingernails sometimes, right? It's, 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 it's very difficult for me to accept the fact that in certain ways the industry has been its own worst enemy. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Gym Owners Grow Zone Podcast. I'm your host, Andres Escobar, and I'm so ready to share this episode and the conversation I had with our guest, David Gaglian. David is a marketing professional with over 20 years of experience. He has taught ESL in Japan and founded Kettlebell Concepts without any outside capital. Now, he is the CMO and executive producer of the Halo Talks podcast at Integrity Square, which if you haven't heard, you need to listen to it after this show. You can find out more information about him at thehalotalks.com. Before we dive deeper, a lot of pre-production work and editing goes into producing an audio and video podcast like this. Moving forward, we're going to be releasing a ton more gym growth strategies and offers from our guests and sponsors. So subscribe or follow us if you're really looking to grow your gym or your other businesses. You know, we really appreciate your support and are truly thankful for it. So when you're listening to the show and you think of somebody, a friend hopefully, do them a favor and share it with them because we all know sharing is caring and it's just a nice thing to do around here. My last ask is so simple. We know ratings and reviews are really helpful for any business and podcast and we would greatly appreciate it if you would leave us your feedback in the form of a review which would help us reach a wider audience and improve the show for you. By the way, if you have any other comments or you need to reach out to me, feel free and connect directly with me on Instagram at Meet Esco. And I'd love to hear any suggestions or concerns you want to share with me. You can also find me on LinkedIn at Andres Escobar, the number one. Now, as we dive into David's episode today, I'm really intrigued to get your opinions and your thoughts about what he's going to share with us. So let's go ahead and jump in and listen to our conversation. Hey, David, thank you so much for being on the show. I just excited to have you. I know we've connected, we met in person and, you know, David comes with us with experience from fitness, marketing, podcast world. I mean, he's going to share with us so much tidbits and I just want to welcome you. Thank you so much for coming on the show, David. Yeah, yeah it's cool to be on the other side of the uh, camera. I appreciate it. <laughs> of course, of course. You know, you can't hide forever. <laughs> I try to. I try to, but unsuccessfully, clearly. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad we got you out here, you know. And, you know, there's so many things that I know about you and our audience. I want to make sure that they get a chance to understand you and who you are and and what value you bring to to the show so if you could just share with us your your story uh your initiation your your hero story you know just a little bit about you and you know we could talk about kettlebell concepts we can talk about whatever you want to talk about this is like your forum this is uh -huh. you to to share the light that that you have i appreciate that yeah. uh I'll, I'll try and keep it short, the bullet points, right? I, I taught English in, in Japan for six years. I went there after graduate school, good times, uh, from 24 to 30. When I got back, it was 2000, late 2000, uh, and the, the dot-com industry was imploding. I call it dot-bomb 1.0. 
But for about three years, I worked for a website called woof.com, the best of the web for men. It was um, like a precursor to Maxim and gear and FHM and all that, right? And, uh, and I was the health and fitness and outdoors editor, right? So I was doing PR, I was freelancing, I was working with freelancers and, you know, never mind the fact that we think the website was a front, but, you know, I digress, right? It was at that time that I knew that if I wanted to be a better editor, I wanted to, you know, learn about the human body. And, and, and so I became ACE certified and I picked up a couple of other um, personal training certifications just because I wanted to be a better editor and a better writer and, you know, more educated if I'm going to be writing about the fitness industry, which was always a big you know, part of my life, right? Fitness. Right. I was All always in. an athlete. Yeah, yeah. But um, long story short, the company died like all of them and found myself freshly moved into America in New York City without a job. Um, it was during my time at Wolf.com that I came across kettlebells again. While I was in Japan, uh, the martial arts, various martial arts use, use kettlebell-like implements for martial arts training. I'm like, huh, these things again. Okay. Yeah. They're from Russia. They're really old and they work, but you got to know what you're doing. It's like learning Olympic weightlifting. Um, and I got a job as a personal trainer at the sports club LA on the upper East side and, uh, started doing the floor rounds like everybody else. And was basically the first in the city that I know of, um, when kettlebells were coming to the fore to just, do it wherever I could. I literally started humping them around New York City and just <laughs> carrying them. People who knew me back in the time are probably going to be hearing this and laughing because I was sweating for five years straight. And so uh, like you know, pur pursuit of happiness, basically, if you could yeah, imagine man. that, right? It lugging was, those big old lugging things. them around because there was only one company at the time that made them. There was only one. It was wow. it was just that one company and. Uh, I, I ran into a guy by the name of Dr. Paul Juris, who was the head of Equinox Fitness Training Institute. Paul and I still speak to this day. He was one of maybe three people that knew the fitness culture, physical culture. He knew what they were. And he's like, oh yeah, kettlebells. They've been around for hundreds of years. Let's do something with them. And flash forward, I, you know, I was the first kettlebell instructor in Equinox. I was doing kettlebell workouts in the park. No one knew what the hell they were. This was probably three years or maybe more before trx and certainly before crossfit appeared in in new york city so i got a lot of traction i learned and continue to learn marketing from the ground up uh, i had a bunch of jobs over the years in marketing while i continued to work on my 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 kettlebell concepts thing and um yeah i ended up uh, working now for pete moore uh who i met Basically, when I first got back from Japan, I went to his office and was like, hey, I'm looking for capital for kettlebells. And he's like, no, nah, we don't do any early stage, but stay in touch. And he meant it. And every every once in a while, I'd like ping him, you know, and and here I am now as his CMO 50, more than 20 years later. Wow. And I've been working for the guy for for 15 years now and have since sold kettle. Uh, well, I've been working for him for four years and kettlebell concepts has since been sold to New York Sports Club. Uh, they picked it up. Oh, yeah. 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 That, that's in club industry. And, you know, that was a while back and I'm no longer involved in, in the day to day. But they picked up the intellectual property over the years. We've trained probably 10,000 plus instructors and we have international affiliates too and i never get tired of that because every once in a while i'll see the facebook page and there's a whole group of like 40 chinese personal trainers with kettlebell concepts t-shirts on and they're like holding up signs and they're you like you never get tired of that you know so i i i i could say that i think i made a dent in the universe i was pretty That's stubborn it. yeah i was pretty That's stubborn it. man i knew That's i awesome. knew that these things would work and that they're effective and that there's no bullshit or hype behind them it's just it's good old-fashioned training but you have to know what you're doing and if you try and do it without knowing what you're doing you might hurt yourself so you know yeah one takeaway i took from there is that you just connected and partnered up with some really cool people uh, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no doubt was, about that, it that is that is fundamental so love yeah. that love that yeah. so much um 
Thank you so much, David. Awesome. So it was it and, was a ride. Let me tell you. <laughs> and 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 we'll we'll definitely have uh, Pete on the show, and and I'm sure he has something to say about it and light into that. So um, yeah, that's exciting. He may um, not remember that we met, but I sure as hell remember <laughs> it because it was like it was like for five minutes, and he had an office on the Upper East Side, and you know he was very polite, and uh, and then we reconnected many 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 years later, and there you have it. Yeah. I'll find out. We'll find out here, guys. Stay we'll find out. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So one thing I like to talk about is roller coasters, right? And so mm. there's so many theme parks and, and life is kind of like a theme park where it has so many different kinds of roller coasters. And it takes you to these like tight turns, ups and downs. And there are certain guardrails, there's certain things that keep us in line to reach our goals. And I just wanted to see what are the things that you see that you use to keep yourself in line to keep your goals and what can gym owners use to keep in line to reach for those goals whether it's be increasing membership whether it be increasing locations you know those things are super important to our audience so that's a really good question and when i read it i don't have an easy answer but if i had to distill it into one thing i would probably say that they have to keep their eye on what they got into the business for in the first place. You know, business is, it's easy to want to grow, 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 expand, 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 create a franchise, open up a thousand units. Like that's what we as business owners, entrepreneurs have been conditioned to think, right? Oh, I have to do an exit or I have to get a 20 times multiple or whatever the heck it is. But people get into this industry typically because they want to help others achieve their their fitness and wellness goals and it's okay to just have a lifestyle business and have two or three or four gyms and not take any outside capital and be able to see your kids and coach a softball team and be a local business owner and and i think a lot of people not just in the gym industry tend to forget that they they lose sight of why they got into it in the first place and they get caught up with oh i need to take in institutional capital i need private equity people i need venture capital people and i'm going to echo pete more on this and he says it all the time he's like guys if you take in private equity money understand that you are now an employee right you are now wow. working for the right okay you you are now working for the private equity firm that owns you or the venture capital firm you are now an employee and and that's a different mindset now yes there's partners and whatever and and you know it's it's a it's a hopefully a love love type of situation there but a lot of owners in their in their zest for growth money um, exits whatever it is that you're conditioned to 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 believe they maybe lose track of their true north, you know? And, right. and I, I, ha I have that's to it. emphasize that that's, that's no good. You know, I've seen it, I've seen it countless times. I still see it. I still see it. Yeah. Especially 100%. now when I'm as the CMO for, for Integrity Square, especially now I see it all the time, you know? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, so keeping the true north, the vision on track. It, I mean, literally, you know, you're looking at where you want to go. That's it. You mm -hmm. focus on that and everything else will come in line. So right. I love that. That's definitely good stuff. Oh, love it. And, yeah. and, and, and the, it can't, we can't, we can't complicate it. Like it, we could, if we wanted to, but there's no right. need to, it's simple. Like right. That. Yeah. It can, it can be, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't always have to be growth for the sake of growth, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I know that in my life I've had co obstacles and challenges, um, personal and business, right? And so uh, can you recall a time where you were able to overcome a challenge or an obstacle that that you were able to, to get through with it? Like love to uh, have that something that can, somebody that's going through that right now, right? Right, because you're gonna talk to somebody that's like, you know, my goodness, that's exactly what I'm going through. What did David do? What does he know to do that's, that could help? Yeah. Again, good question and not not an easy one. Uh, but when I I saw that also in advance, I, I had to go back to um, when 
you know, I had no real capital for kettlebells. Um, I leveraged all my credit cards. You know, I, I, I ruined my credit score. It, it, it just anyone who's an entrepreneur can probably relate to that. Um, I'm going to also add that people who don't do any sweat equity and don't start making sales out of the gate and just go for venture capital right away. That that irritates me. Like, cr like do the do the freaking work. Do the freaking work. Make sales. Make money. You know, get 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 some sales under your belt. You know what I mean? Like, I, I it irritates me. It's like, oh, I'm gonna start to raise ten million dollars or two million dollars. You haven't made dollar one. So I I always like to say to people like, do the work. Start making sales. And yeah. and if if you're if to to your point about your question, if not, if that isn't happening then you're not ready for anything else, right? You, you have to, and in my case, it was just, I knew it was gonna be kettlebells as an implement, but my, my take was different. It was education. I have a master's degree in teaching curriculum and development, right? My, my, I knew that it wasn't going to be personality focused. It was gonna be education focused. We, we didn't wanna have a master guy, right? And, and he's the face and he's the, you know, that has its time and place, but I knew that the, the market would quickly become saturated and I was right. And we developed a reputation for the, the nerdy guys, not glamorous, not sexy, definitely not as marketable, right? And it, it, it hurt us in the beginning, but we, I kept our true north. I kept the fact that our education was and is still graduate level coursework in motor learning, kinesiology, exercise physiology, stuff that like personal trainers way back in the day had no experience with. And mm. we kept hammering that point home and it worked. So I would say to any other business owner, like make sure you know what, what that one thing is, what your differentiator or differentiators are and keep hammering at that. And if it still doesn't work, if you're still in the early stages and you still haven't made dollar one, then you gotta then you gotta tweak it a little bit, you know? Right. Yeah. Man, that that's honestly I I talk to a lot of gym owners as well and it's like, listen, how are you different from any other gym? What mm. makes you stand out? What's your audience? You know? Yeah. Which one are you going to talk to that's going to resonate and say, yes, that's the gym for me. Like that's, yeah. is it, is it because you guys are martial arts related or is it because you guys are uh, sports related? Like you guys have a, a sports inclination. What is it, right? What is it that you're doing? You know, um, I got one that's like, it, you know, horse It's in horse country. I'm like, that's, that's your audience right there your backyard can tell you who your audience is who mm -hmm. is because you talk about a local gym it's not like you're trying to you know sell online to somebody in a different state country no it's yeah. right there who's in your backyard? five mile radius yeah that's it yeah. that's, it. that's yeah. it like if that's not who you want your audience to be then you shouldn't have picked that location <laughs> <laughs> that's it simple so, sounds pretty simple right yeah it sounds great <laughs> right um no that's 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 great um it's true so you know the fitness industry we talk about all the benefits they're so good to the dopamines you know for for your, your total body your mind your mindset right mindset's such a big thing as well you know but there are things that need to be improved in the fitness industry what do you see as one of the things that we can e either take away or put in to the fitness industry to get it to the next level where where it should be, right? What what what's the like if I if I took the fitness industry and put it into a a maintenance garage for my car, what where where, where are we fixing? What what's the uh, it's not the catalytic converter. We we don't have those anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, remember before you hit record, I said that I, I wouldn't be kind. Here's yeah, where I'm not going to be is, kind. This, this is the one, this is the spot that was waiting for you, this right? Is, this, this is, is the question where I'm not going to be kind. And, and I think, uh, well, for me, the answer is, uh, I'm just trying to not be too much of a New Yorker here is, is education. 
right? And okay. I'll, I'll give I'll give an anecdotal story. While I was humping kettlebells around, I I would of course run into the celebrity trainer types. Um, if I said their names, there's about six or seven of them. Um, you would you and everyone else listening to this would immediately know who they are, right? And with the exception of of Paul Juris, who's brilliant and taught at Columbia back in the day, every single one of these trainers will literally either kick me out on my ass non-ceremoniously they're the same as dumbbells and barbells or um they're they, they don't work they're, they're the exact same there's no difference or I, it's too hard or and on and on and on so ignorance in other words you know i'm big i'm built my clients look great everyone here is sexy so I don't, I don't need to learn anything new. I, I don't need to keep up with the latest sciences. I don't need to keep up with the newest in research. I don't need to read the trade journals. Don't even get me started. I, and it's, it's not, frankly, I don't think it's gotten much better. Maybe a little bit with the, with the advent of technology and things like, you know, Zoom and the access to education. Right. And YouTube. Let me walk that back. Yeah, it, it actually has gotten a little bit better, but not by much because I'm a teacher. And like if you're if you're training people, if you're putting your hands on people's bodies and you don't read the latest research journals and you don't subscribe to guys like uh, shout out to Dr. Lane Norton and, and a couple of other guys, you know, Dr. Spencer Nadalski, who's amazing guys like if you're not paying attention to the science people, maybe you shouldn't be training people for a living one. Now I'm not done. I'm, I'm, you, you, I'm going, okay. Go, the business, go, the no business, <laughs> the business owners are quite frankly, sometimes just as bad because, okay, they are a trainer and they work for Equinox, Lifetime, New York Sports, whatever. And then they go in and then they, of course, bring in a lot of their clients. They have no idea how to run a business. They have no idea about a profit and loss statement. They have no idea about the mechanics of owning a business and they're stubborn, right? And they, they don't educate themselves. They don't take basic business classes. They don't go for training they don't hire a mentor they don't join a round table they kind of feel their way around and what happens nine times out of ten it goes it goes to pot right and and i i continue to see that even in mature businesses even in businesses with institutional capital and investors and, and a board you know i am i am not bullish on the willingness of this of this um industry to continually be open-minded and educate themselves. I, I'm getting there because it's taken 20 years and I've been in it since 2001 and, and I'm an educator by training. I'm getting there because of technology and the ability to, to do YouTube and webinars and all this great stuff. This is, I'm a, I'm a tech nerd, I'm a marketing guy, I'm, I'm a big fan. But the open-mindedness of the industry, it's like prying open a freaking can with your fingernails sometimes, right? It's, 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 it's very difficult for me to accept the fact that in certain ways the industry has been its own worst enemy, right? It's been its own worst enemy. For those listening to this, and especially on the East Coast, if you remember Bally's back in the yeah. day, that was a big, huge black eye on the industry, one of the many. Right. As, OK, lifetime contracts that people couldn't get out of. And I, yep. Are you freaking kidding me? Right. So is it any wonder that institutional capital years ago and, uh, you know, just they, they would laugh at the fitness industry like what? Invest in the gym, invest in gyms. Are you fucking kidding? Right. Who, who invests in gyms? This is this was not many years ago. Right. And there was a reason for it. There was a reason for that thought process around institutional capital, because the, the industry was lowbrow, low key. There were no real lifetimes around or no crunches to the extent that there are now or no insti certainly no institutional capital involved, which, right. you know, ups the ante a little bit. Right. So it's it's almost like back in the day, the industry it's its own worst enemy. It's its own fault to some degree that it that it is where it is. And as an optimist, it has gotten much, much, much better. There's all of these great institutions that are educating people. 
you know, you got guys like shout out to Julian Barnes at, at Boutique Fitness Solution, mm -hmm. you know, obviously Integrity Square doing the Halo Academy, Halo Talks, you know, the podcast with Pete Moore, you know, Pete wrote the book Time to Win Again, you know, all these other things are starting to happen and the industry is paying attention. Uh, Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk gave a gave a, uh, a, ch uh, a talk on marketing at one of the URSAs long before COVID. And that okay. was talk about a shot in the arm. I was there for that. Wow, were you? And, okay. Yeah, and I'm like, go Gary V, give it yeah. to these people. Like they needed to hear this, right? Yeah. Um, so Everybody um, should hear Gary at least once or twice in their life. Oh yeah, he's he's a he's a, little, a trip and a half. Yeah. A little, a little shock to their, their a little shock cerebellum. to the system. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's a trip and a half, but he, you know, he speaks the truth and and he speaks it like a, a New Yorker. So I I right. think it's gotten better. I think it's gotten better, but that that's the one thing that really got under my craw. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think it's kind of like you look at the fitness industry and and I could relate it to like the church, right? And it's just like it's gone wide, but it hasn't gone deep enough. Well said. Right? 100%. It's gone wide, but it's just not deep. Like like let's make sure the education is there. Let's make sure that we're not just superficial on hey, lifetime contracts. That's crazy. Yeah. And and like you know, let's have some flexibility. And I see it. It's better now. It is better now. You know, hey, listen, you have the option of going month to month or you want this is the annual contract. This is what. And the thing is like, oh, yeah, let me go for the cheaper one. Yeah, but that's annual. You're good with that, right? Mm -hmm. It's your word. You're going to do an annual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then, oh, no, I got to go. All right. Well, there's some classes. Like, do you fit any of these? Like, show me proof. Nope. I'm sorry. Collections. Like that's right. like, oh, you yeah. said you were going to do that. So anyway, so anyways, yeah, we can go and deep also, into that. Just one more point on that. Yeah, like, go ahead. I, as I mentioned earlier, the fitness industry being its own worst enemy from a marketing standpoint, like, are, are you kidding me? Everything zero down, one dollar down, right? <laughs> we, we've we it's like, have we not learned anything since freaking COVID, right? Are people if, if you're if you're a low volume yeah, high volume, you know, low price HBLP right. player, right. then sure, you know, yeah. that's your that's your model. That's, but that's your marketing strategy. That's your strategy. That's fine. But like if you're not, and there are a lot of people listening to this who are who certainly are not, like why are you giving away your product? Why why haven't you learned anything? Why are you racing to the bottom? You look at a company like um, you know uh, Promotion Vault, which is is yeah. you know we've known we've known these guys. Uh, you know full disclosure, Integrity Square owns a small part of, of of Promotion Vault, right? They're part of our portfolio brands, right? right. And and Brian Mitchell, the CEO, yeah. has is a brilliant marketer, yeah. and he's way way ahead of the curve, and he's been talking about this stuff long before the fitness industry ever adopted it. And not surprisingly, people that jumped on the promotion vault bandwagon, I was part of that yeah. before I started working with Pete. Um, they crush it. They absolutely crush it. Because instead of like, instead of like dropping your pants and saying, you know, zero dollars down, no, we're gonna we're gonna give you a, 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 a gift card for Forty dollars or ten dollars or whatever, and here's another incentive to go and do your first personal training session. It's value there, right? Yeah. And you're and you're still getting that revenue up front, and you're not cheapening your product, yeah. right? And and that's just marketing 101. And I wish more and more owners knew that. And that's a strategy right there, honestly. Like that's so valuable. Where, hey, listen, you saw our ad online. Great, you gave us your information. You know, we're booking your appointment and then confirm the appointment. Hey, by the way, hey, when you come in, uh, I got I got that that gift card for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to decide which one you want. So uh, which one do you want? Do you want the Amazon gift card or it's all electronic? The, it's do, brilliant. You the, do you want the Nike one mm -hmm. or Brandsmart or, or uh, uh, Best Buy? Sorry, Best Buy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, yeah, I mean, you get them to opt in and you ask them a, a, a binary question. Mm -hmm. You want the Amazon or you want the Best Buy? Oh yeah, yeah, I want the the Amazon one. Okay, great. I'll see you at two thirty today. Awesome. Yeah, that's it. Like that's simple, easy. He he wrote. I mean, he didn't code it, but like he developed this platform, and it's so so elegant and so well done. He's he's coined the term rewards as a service. Yes, instead it's of software he has, as a service. Yes, yes. He, and and it makes sense. And I just wish, look, 
you know whether whether people use promotion vault or not is is not is not really my concern my concern right. is for the betterment of the industry consider doing something like that as opposed to going back right. to freaking early 2000s and doing what's the you know you do the same thing over and over again expecting a different result that's insanity or uh, albert einstein right? That's right and 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 pete and i can't i can't emphasize this point enough and i agree with him 100% this is probably the only time we had this black swan event in the form of COVID and the industry is basically and is not is in the process of rebooting. It's in the process of rebooting. Mm -hmm. So it's like a once in a lifetime chance for the entire industry to change the narrative of who we are, what we offer, the prices we offer it for, mm -hmm. and so on and so on and so on. Right. Oh, so good. <laughs> a lot of tidbits, a lot of tidbits right there. You you can munch on a little bit here, a little bit there, but plenty enough. Uh, All right, you sorry, you got me, no, got me a little hot under the collar. We there. got a little strategies. <laughs> we got a little improvements. Listen, we want to become better. We got to take the good with the bad, right? You got to understand what things that we got to improve. And it's not for everybody. Like, listen, if it if it's relatable, okay, great. And if you want to listen to it, fantastic. If not, no worries. Mm. Um, but we, we are giving you, like David's giving you a some things to take away and you can take it as as you as you will <laughs> take it or leave it that's <laughs> that's, right. that's why it's a podcast <laughs> no worry great assault great assault right there just <laughs> so the the particular story that 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 people tell each other and it, it's super important and and how we perceive and get influenced by other people is is part of the chemistry that makes us up right and so what I'm asking you, David, is who in your past, obviously Pete is a huge influence in your life. I yep. understand that and I know that. Uh, but is there anybody outside of Pete? Or if you want to talk about Pete, it's cool too. Like, I don't want to take away, I want to know, like, who was the person that was, that poured into you as a mentor? It could be virtual, it could be a book, it could be anything that, that you, that helped you become who you are? Yeah. Um, there are two specifically outside of Pete that I want to mention. Um, yeah. Vincent Mezzo is brilliant. He's Bill Nye, the science guy. He's currently working for Lionel. Um, and, and Vince became the director of education for Kettlebell Concepts, having formerly run, uh, he, he moved on from the Swedish Institute, but the Swedish Institute, he developed, he was on the licensing board for massage therapy of New York state. The guy is brilliant. He, he developed the personal training department curriculum in the Swedish Institute. So you got these LMTs that also graduated with like this incredible credential and would pass the CSCS like that. They would pass ACSM like this. And I word got around. I'm like, who, who is this guy doing these incredible, who is this guy turning out these incredible personal trainers and massage therapists? So I cold called them and years later was still very, very good friends. And he has taught me a tremendous amount about being integrous, you know, I, I, I kid with him a lot about like, hey man, you gotta do the marketing thing, you gotta do the branding thing. And and so we play off of each other that way, but but he's one of the guys that has helped me keep my true north. And a second person that I wanna definitely mention is a guy by the name of Roger Harvey. And Roger uh, was the COO of Crunch and helped build that brand along with Doug Levine, the founder, for I think 14 years, wow. right? Roger, uh, I was introduced to him through a guy named Rob Piella, who runs Gotham Boxing, who worked with Roger, and he came in to, to Kettlebell Concepts later on. And I wish that I had met him earlier on because probably things would have been much easier for me. But he came in later on and helped me with the branding and the mission statement and all the other stuff that I kind of didn't do Ooh. because I was too busy trying to make sales and pull the yeah. lowest hanging fruit. But the guy is just, he's a, he's a little unorthodox. He talks about the stuff that I like to talk about, string theory and quantum physics. And <laughs> he's just, he's brilliant. Philosophy, quotes like this at the ready. And I, I say this without any hyperbole. The, the man's almost always right. I, I mean, he's just 
just it's freaky how right he is okay and people just need to listen to him right and he has taught me a tremendous amount about being humble learning growing seeking out other mentors asking questions you know finding the root and you said it perfectly going deep instead of wide like he talks about that all the time he's even got like a tree and a whole thing he's got oh, a whole, love it he's got like a whole presentation roger and vince and of course pete have been instrumental i mean pete's wow. taken me in a whole another journey about uh, on the finance world you know sure. i have a 20 year background in marketing and then some but but in in the finance world and you know, private equity venture capital whatever i never thought i would like it but i really do and and that is a, a shout out to a guy like pete who was able to take very 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 difficult concepts and make them not only approachable but interesting right and that was one of the that was one of the reasons for the halo academy which you know was always in the integrity yeah. square business plan but covid of course accelerated it like everything else um so yeah those three guys man goal is a beautiful word to hear when you're scoring on the soccer field this last world cup was won by argentina because of one important player yeah you got it it was the goalie he secured the win for the team and in the same way review biz platform will catch negative reviews before they go online in addition, it helps you score and promote fresh new reviews so you can crush the competition. So don't let those big box gyms take your clients. ReviewBiz will help you build your online presence and turn your own members into your best sales reps. Get your first five reviews for only $1. All you got to do is go to reviewbiz.io forward slash try to get started. All right, so next question I have is all about growth because this is the gym owner's growth zone and there's certain things that inhibit us from reaching growth and that's tried. And so what would you say were, were some of the things that inhibited your growth and what were the things that you would invest more in to help you get the growth faster? So it's like a two-part question. So So you can tackle it whichever way you want to, but it's just for for us to help us understand and kind of like put it all into like these two topics what's gonna am i removing and what am i adding um okay well i mean and and, and this is coming from the fact that i'm in marketing for so long so it's right it's a little it's a little self-serving but ask any That's business fine. owner ask any business owner anyone who's been in it for a long long time the very first thing, you know, nothing happens in business until you make a sale, right? That's, I think, also Jeff Gittimer. And you don't have to get it right. You just have to get it going. And marketing, I'm going to steal Pete, Pete Moore's phrase on this, right? Marketing should not be thought of as a cost. It should be thought of as an investment. And I never heard it put that succinctly before. And he's freaking right. Like, what do, what do business owners do? They don't mark. They, they're like, oh, marketing costs too much money. We don't do that. Well, what, what ha it's an old expression in advertising. What happens if you don't advertise? Nothing, right? And, and this has never been more true in, in yeah. 2023. So I, I, I have to pound it over business owners' heads, right, that you need to continually market and, of course, sell. I mean, the two things are two very different things, as hopefully people listening to this knows, but you have to constantly market and, and sell. And, and that will continue to get you, you know, motivated. Nothing like seeing a couple of ducats in the bank and, oh, this is working and my widget is selling and my gym is bringing in more members and whatever it is, right? right. And the only way that that's gonna happen is if you market. That's part A. And part B, and I'm gonna go to the mattresses on this because I've had, I've had this conversation 50,000 times. I've lost track of how many times I've told people this. <laughs> And, and, and people who are listening, listen up close because I'm giving you pearls right now. I'm 52, I know what I'm talking about. Here's the thing. If you don't get your people off Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever social media channel that you're doing, and you should probably be doing most of them, right? 
guess what? They're not your customer. They're Facebook's customer. They're Instagram's customer. They're right. YouTube's customer. You need to constantly be getting them into your own database. And that means SMS marketing, if you can grab their cell phone numbers, and it certainly means email marketing. And any yeah. idiot out there who says that email marketing is dead, because I've heard that, or you know, or S text message marketing is dead, or postcard drops are dead. They don't, they don't know what the hell they're talking about, right? Because Facebook can turn an algorithm like that, so can YouTube, and you've just lost 100,000 followers, and you haven't gotten- We've a seen it happen. Exactly, and you've got, you haven't gotten a single email address. Whose fault is that, right? Yeah. So I, that's, the, that's the big, big single takeaway from me. I love it. I'm going to I'm going to put it in in bite size here for everybody. So, so marketing and sales stop don't stop advertising. Mm. Don't stop advertising because if you do, then everything else stops. stops. <laughs> the life lifeblood of your business will not pump. That's right. <laughs> the lifeblood within your business will not pump. And and then Facebook, any social media outlet that we use, it's a borrowed audience. Mm -hmm. We're borrowing the attention. I like that until you actually get them inside of your funnel, mm -hmm. whatever it is, your cycle, your sales cycle, mm -hmm. with the name, phone number, and email, mm -hmm. it's real simple, then they're your audience. That's right. Then you can actually send an email, which costs nothing. Yep. I mean, whatever the platform, maybe $20, $50, whatever, to send an email mm -hmm. per month, that's nothing compared to Facebook ads. <laughs> nothing. So, so those are great. I love it because marketing world, I'm with you. Yeah. Like that's, we, we I talked got my about ear this to the when we first that. met. We talked about yeah. this. We nerded out about this when we first met, and we're on the same page because you're doing review, you know, review biz. So you, you're right. I'm preaching to the choir with you, but you and I both know that people may not feel that way. You know. Yeah, people's like, okay, what do I need to do? What's what's this? What's this one thing that I need to do? And and, and you just said, hey, listen, just do some advertisement, some kind of form of advertisement, and then get people out, uh, attract them. Hey, going back to prom Promote Vault, mm -hmm. attract them, <laughs> lure them into your world with a promotion with from Promotion Vault mm -hmm. with a gift card. It's a virtual gift card. Guys, look it up, guys, and you know we'll put some links and stuff in our show, and you guys will, will check it out. So, but yeah, no, it's super, super important. Um, all right, so this towards the end, not quite the finish. Mm -hmm. We're almost there. And so we have what we call is the fast five. And so the fast five, I just ask you questions, you answer real quick. Okay. Back and forth. Um, so let's start. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Ready. Who is an influential person or people in your business journey? I mentioned before, Roger Harvey, Vince Mezzo, and Pete Moore, of course. Yeah. Boom. Beautiful. Yeah, I kind of prepared you already for the answer, so that's I, I'm I'm nice that way. Yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> What's one thing you wish you had known when you began your business? Um. More more about the the actual nuts and bolts, the finance part, the Excel part, the profit and loss part. That I had no background in that, and I kind of had to feel my way along, and I think that hindered me a little bit. And certainly, you can't expect to do everything. And I didn't have the money for a bookkeeper, so I kind of ignored that part and did what I knew I did well, which was marketing and sales. So I, I wish I had more of the nuts and bolts stuff uh, move, going into it. Love that. Yeah. That's so so good. Uh, what's a book, a blog, a podcast, uh, some kind of media that you've consumed and has positively impacted you? Well, I'm going to plug Halo Talks, of course, which is Let's our go. podcast, yeah. right? Uh, because Pete, you should. You, know, you guys, you guys are like at, at 390 episodes plus, yeah. Like right now, yeah. and it's it's awesome. It, like, it's, go check them out. Thank you. It's because you know Pete's got all these deep deep relationships in the finance world and and the fitness world, and uh, you know I'll pat myself on the back. I do pretty well there myself. So I, it feels good as an educator to put out a product that's that good. And I know you can yeah. relate because you're, you're doing your own podcast. And the second thing I would say, as far as a book is concerned, and I get into a little bit of the self-help and the philosophy and the stuff like that. There's a book by a guy named Dan Millman who uh, okay. wrote something called Way of the Peaceful Warrior, 
which was his very okay. first book and it has he's since written 10 or 12 or something after that and it it was i completely nerded out when he said yes to getting on halo talks it was the coolest freaking thing to to get dan millman on on halo talks so we got we got him on halo talks but read way of the peaceful warrior it's loosely yeah. based on a true story that happened to him it was made into an independent movie uh, which is also good with Nick Nolte as the as the Socrates mentor character. Okay. Um, Way of the Peaceful Warrior book or movie or any of Dan Millman's stuff. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. You guys check out Halo Talks. They got some really cool guests. Uh, I was looking at their recent guest, uh, Hampton, which is like Hampton online Lou. guru, yeah. and he's he loves you know functionality and. Mobility and is is a real cool guy. Um, and Doctor Lane, so Norton, many guys. Doctor Lane Norton was that took me six months to get him, you know. Yeah. But that guy is brilliant. Listen, everyone listening to this should follow Doctor Lane Norton. He's amazing. Lane Norton, yeah. checking him out. Yeah. We're gonna put him on there. Yeah. So good. Um, do you have a favorite online tool? A very strong favorite is Basecamp. Like okay. We, okay. for project management, I am a base base camp nerd. We basically okay. run wow our entire podcast, Halo Academy, everything through Basecamp. Um, and I also use Kartra, which is a Infusionsoft competitor and HubSpot competitor. Right. And I've used all three of those platforms. Infusionsoft, still a fan. HubSpot and Kartra used to stink like ten years ago. It is it is awesome. It's like everything all in one. And it's just gotten better and better and better. I moved my entire website, localmobiletoday.com. I moved my entire website onto Kartra, the prospect wizard, everything that's all Kartra. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I've never played with Kartra, but I've I've know people that have, and they they like it. It got it got so much better. I didn't I didn't like it when it first came out, but it's awesome now. Yeah. Yeah. And the last five uh -huh. is, what's one habit or practice? you do that you believe everybody would benefit from drink coffee in the morning <laughs> <laughs> i love that answer <laughs> i'm a big coffee guy i love it well how do you make your coffee by the way black and maybe a little bit of milk no sugar you know we americans have too much sugar so just black uh, how, or a little... how do you make it oh how do i make it i mean it? well okay. Yeah, how, how how do you brew your coffee? That's a better question. Okay, how do you brew your it's coffee? either drip coffee or or like okay. the drip one, or I do the um I have a AeroPress if I'm getting fancy. Ooh, AeroPress. I, if that's, I'm getting fancy, fancy. I I grind okay. grind the beans and use an AeroPress. But sometimes you know you don't have time for that stuff. So <laughs> no, I hear you. My, my my favorite right now is French press and. Oh, but it's similar to yeah. AeroPress. Exactly. I got to get an AeroPress. That's my next. Oh, it's, next. An MIT engineer invented that thing. Oh, wow. I'm not kidding. Look at look at how the, the AeroPress was invented and how it like took off. It was some MIT guy who just came up with those two pieces of plastic. And there you have it. <laughs> I got I got to look into that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this is the end of the show, and we just have one question that we want to make sure everybody takes away. Mm -hmm. And this one is is going to go and sort of reach back into your past. And so can you share one piece of advice that you would tell 10-year-old David about yourself in life? And what would that be? You know, I saw that question, and... I don't have an easy answer for that, but if I was to go back and tell my 10 year old self something, it would probably be, it's going to be a trite answer, but probably be like, ultimately don't s sweat the small stuff because it's all small stuff, right? That, that was a t-shirt and I'm stealing it and people have probably seen that t-shirt, but we get so wrapped up in 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 our own heads in our own drama yeah. in our own narratives as as yeah. roger would like to say and you get you get caught up you make yourself physically sick you make yourself mentally sick potentially uh if you're if you're not already clinically depressed or, or there's issues there but we, we we get we get so wrapped up in 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 the stuff of of life that it, it could we it it you forget, you lose track. We're on this planet. You know, Pete says it all the time. We're on this planet going 66,000 miles an hour around the sun. We forget, you know, what, what ultimately 
kind of uh, a cool thing that is, right? And, uh, and you know, we're, we get caught up in bills and payments and marriage and kids and all the other stuff. And, and if I, if, you're not expected to know that as a kid, right? As a 10 year old, right. you're not expected to know that as a 10 year old, but if you could somehow communicate that uh. to a kid who's that age in a way that he or she understands it, I think it would be a pretty good message for them to get, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You matter so much. You matter so much that everything else is so small mm. and don't sweat it. That's it. It, it is a, a little bit boring to, to just say, oh, don't sweat the small stuff. But there's a reason right. that cliches are cliches, right? They've been around yeah. for so long. There's, there's maybe a grain of truth in there, you know? Tried, tried and true. Yeah. Tried and true. Yeah. That's it. That's awesome. I wish I had something well, better for you for that one. But. No, no, that's <laughs> awesome. I, I love it because it's simple. Yeah. It's simple. And, and, and we can take a lot from it, you know? You know, it's it's all small stuff except for you. You're not small. Right. You're 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 meant for so much more mm -hmm. and big and so don't worry about the little stuff everything else that opinion that thing that you don't have what you do have anything just worry uh, don't even worry don't even worry yeah don't sweat it right i love it yeah. no it, it's it's don't it's good it's a tough it's, one i love it it's so good <laughs> easy to say but real tough to do isn't it yeah especially 100%. As we, especially as we get 100%. older yeah man yeah we got to continue pouring into us good stuff yeah that way all the minutia and all the the crap it just gets washed out and if because we constantly are taking in some crap in this world is crazy right so i think that's just part of being somebody said somebody said to me i have a pma i'm like well, excuse me what do i have <laughs> <laughs> and and if nobody knows i didn't know at that time what is and it? it's positive mental attitude i'm like oh ah, okay thank you <laughs> I, I like it i like it i like it no and that affects well, others around you too man if you work right. on your own house first then then that's just gonna affect others around you and and you put out the good stuff but you have to be you have to be complete in and of yourself first and that's that's a journey isn't it you know it sure is yeah. and it's and it's and that's it it's the journey. Yeah. Love the journey more than destination, right? We've heard that. So uh, I love this. And so let's not finish, but let's just continue. <laughs> um, you know, we want to see everybody here in the growth zone. And so I want to thank our guest, David, for, for showing up and showing showing up and all in uh, <laughs> and sharing with us so much. Thank you so much, David. You got it, man. Thanks for having me on. It was a lot of fun. Hey, that was really good to jam with David. He definitely jam-packed the interview with some good nuggets. I really liked how he reminded us to keep our eye on our why and why we got into business. It's so important. And you know I truly love the principle of hammering the unique mechanism that helps you stand out from everyone else. How about the idea that most businesses are not investing in themselves. I hope you received that concept well. I would have never thought how a degree in education could really be leveraged into the fitness industry. I really like the principle of holding yourself responsible to going into sales and viewing marketing as an investment. I would love to hear what stood out for you. So go ahead and drop me a comment on Instagram you can find me at Meet Esco, and I'd be super grateful to hear from you. Also, if you still need to do so and you thought about someone while listening, go ahead and share this podcast with them. And I want to thank you again for your time and attention in listening to our show. Remember to follow or subscribe if you still need to do so. Our next episode is going to be with Pete Moore, and I can't wait to have you listen to it. I'll be seeing you next time in the growth zone.